So lifting the 16 inch four jaw on and off of the lathe absolutely ruined my back on Friday. So Saturday morning, I decided to make a chuck lifter in my workshop and take it to work for Monday. And this is the result, works pretty well. This is a common upgrade or modification we make to these rotors. We increase the size of the thread to M16, which makes it a little bit stronger in these cast iron shafts. This is done using the fixed steady, and as you can see, the center on this shaft was running out by a country mile, and it wasn't 60 degrees either. So that was rectified and recut with a very small boring bar. During the day, there are multiple setups required for the number of shafts that we do. Some shafts need more work than others. Some sets will take a whole day. Other times we'll get three or four sets done. Here's a Myford four jaw being held in that 12 inch three jaw chuck, just to save a bit of time. Here's another shaft which has a center running out of true, which again needed setting up in the fixed steady. Our next topic is these soft jaws. We've acquired another two sets now, which will allow us to have sets for multiple sizes of shaft. This should save a lot of time over taking the four jaw on and off of the lathe. During my testing with that Pratt Super Precision chuck, we've been able to hold about half a foul, removing the jaws and putting them back in. This rotor isn't actually a blower. It's from a dosing or a metering unit. This actually measures out set amounts of flour and it only turns at about 30 RPM. So these blades are bolted on and they've been set using feeler gauges. Once they're set, the rotor comes back out of the housing and we machine the ends square so that they are running nice and true with the uh, OD of the rotor. Quite a laborious process and quite noisy as well. So that's the finished product there. Little bit of deburring, and this can be reassembled in the housing to work out how much needs to come off of this end plate. So we've already skimmed the middle. Now, because we've shortened the rotor down, we need to skim a little bit off the flange just to make sure all our clearances are correct. So that rotor was measured with a 10 or 12 inch micrometer and then we add six foul aside. So we're taking a, an amount off of the flange of this end plate that will give us that six foul aside clearance. This is the Harrison Alpha 1800 lathe they've got at work. It's semi CNC and we've just worked out how to work it in manual. So we're doing quite well. This rotor had a 22 foul bend in the shaft. We have heat straightened it, and then we've set up the steady and recut the tailstock center. And just checking there how much run out we've got now when running on the tailstock. And because the shaft had a bend, it damaged the ends of the rotor. So we're just facing that off square now to clean up the scoring. We've also metal sprayed the shaft where we heat straightened it and it had all that damage. And here we're just taking our finish cuts. So the finish cut is about 10 thou on diameter. This is possible because of the porous nature of the spray material and the CBN insert. As you can see, it gives an excellent surface finish that is as machined. Once you hit that with a bit of emery tape to take off the last few temps, it's perfect. And again, once you've machined one rotor, you need to match the other one. So we're just taking down the face of the rotor and matching this rotor to the finished length of the other rotor that was damaged. This pair of rotors had become worn in operation and they needed all three tips machining. So there's a pair of these rotors, we've welded them up and now we're machining them back 
to tolerance. And I'll probably show you a little bit more of this on the next video where we use a precision ground ring to judge the size of the three lobes. Obviously you can't use a micrometer across three lobes, so we have to use a setting ring. Using a DRO makes it a little bit simpler because we can zero our DRO to a bearing seat or a known diameter and then wind out to this sort of six inch diameter and then measure that with the ring when we start getting close because we're looking for a, a tight sliding fit. So thank you once again for watching guys. Thank you to all the new subscribers. I've really appreciated all the comments and likes too. Um, it is noted and it does spur us on to film more content to uh, keep putting on here. So I'll just leave you with this. This was a little delivery we made to a bakery, installed some bakery equipment with our colleague Nigel. And today we have just installed seven new elements into this oven as they'd all burnt out. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.